shower for one of my dearest friend's daughters. This one was especially memorable because we were the grandparents. We gathered in the living room for the main event, opening the presents. And as the mom-to-be was opening her gifts, her two-year-old nephew, Bobby, darted to the center of the room. All eyes were on Bobby. And someone tried to get his attention, and someone said, Bobby doesn't talk much. He's autistic. But Bobby wouldn't be deterred. He went straight in the center of the room to a coffee table that had a round black device on it. And he was focused, and he put both hands firmly on the table, and in a loud, confident voice said, hey, Google, and the device turned on, and he was engaged and happy, and the device responded in kind. And Bobby said, play my dance song. And Baby Shark, you know that song that we can't get out of our heads? came on in full volume, and Bobby was engaged and dancing, delighted and fully in his element. This moment got me thinking about how this uninvited and unexpected guest technology makes life more accessible for Bobby and others who may benefit. So you met Bobby. Bobby is not alone. The CDC said one in 36 children will be diagnosed with autism. Boston Consulting Group surveyed our workforce in 2023 and 25% responded having a disability versus the 4 to 6% previously reported by their companies. This is a very wide gap. But what was shocking to me about this study is they said 80% of us will acquire a disability during our working years. Disability is described broadly by the American with Disabilities Act. It can be ADHD, mental illness, requiring a wheelchair, blindness, cancer, or postpartum depression. It can be permanent or temporary. And, you know, I can understand not wanting to disclose. I'm a breast cancer survivor, and I was diagnosed the week before my 50th birthday. And I will say, something that actually gave me purpose and normalcy during my treatment, it was work. At the time, I was working for a 5,000 person public company. So I decided to tell one person. So I went right to the top, to the chief human resource officer, knowing that because of the American Disabilities Act, she could not tell anyone. This meant not my immediate manager didn't even know. The head of HR or anyone else knew about my diagnosis. I felt it was better this way. I didn't want to be treated differently. And I didn't want people making decisions on my behalf. I was a leader in the company. And I didn't want decisions made about my leadership capacity or my authority. You know, many people choose never to disclose. And this is leaving employers in the dark with over 25% of their working population. So back to Bobby. Bobby was using technology without even thinking about it. So how about you, if you may, raise your hand if you've ever used voice prompts while using directions, maybe to get to this event today. Thank you. Great, raise your hand if you've ever used captions to watch a program. Excellent, how about using your voice and your face recognition to open your, unlock your phone, whoever will raise their hand on that one. Guess what? You've used AI. In the next 10 years, 57% of the workforce will be digital natives. That's most of you here today. I grew up with vinyl. 
But now I listen to my Pandora curated playlist to hear my music. As you're aware, these music services are excellent for choosing your favorite artist, but they also can pick genres such as play something for cooking or say something for focus. I love the Adele channel. And I love her soulful, powerful ballads. But I'm always surprised when they slip another song in. And I love that song, Shallow, by Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Yeah. And, and I've listened to it on repeat when I'm in the zone. How about you? Can you imagine a world without your playlist? No. It's 2024. And artificial intelligence is at the forefront of our society. There is a lot of concerns about this technology. Concerns of cybersecurity issues. Concerns of job displacement. Concerns it will surpass humanity. With this, we have an opportunity. AI is going at a very rapid pace of change. And we can establish ethical guidelines and stay informed of its impact. But with this challenge comes opportunity, and opportunity especially for those with disabilities in our workforce. AI is creating new resources, skills learning, and career pathways. Embracing this change is a choice and it is a mindset. This idea is validated by McKenzie, who's a global consulting firm. And they say, if we can address work and life barriers for those with disabilities, we will add $400 billion to the global economy. So this isn't just better for our society, and workplace, this is also helping our economy. We need to make this part of the design so we don't leave anyone behind. AI learns from the data we give it. So just like Bobby, he was interacting with his personal device. And as he interacts and shares his preferences, the AI-assisted device makes his life more accessible. So as we can interact with these devices and programs, we are actually assisting the machine learning for greater accuracy. So here's one way maybe you're using AI today. So if you would with me, raise your hand if anyone here is Gen Z. Great. So a pre-play study in 2023 found that 70% of Gen Z use closed captions while watching programs. 53% of millennials compared to 38% of Gen X and 35% of baby boomers. Well, why is this? Well, you know, captions are excellent and important if you're deaf or hard of hearing, or if you're watching a program that's not in your native language. But they're also excellent for information retention, right, and for multitasking. So bear with me, raise your hand if you've ever watched Netflix while working on a paper and had captioning on. No shame, oh everybody raise your hand, no shame. I do it too while I work. Can you imagine a world without captions? No. So here's a device that came up in 1999. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with the standing wheelchair. So the standing wheelchair was conceived in 1999. And what we're seeing today is AI is inflecting these new ways that we can bring these devices to market. So this happened in 1999. Seal inventor Dean Kamen conceived of the iBot, a standing wheelchair. It stands on two wheels. Has anyone seen this? And it also can climb stairs. Two years later, he then invented the Segway. Is anyone familiar with the Segway? And this was poised to take over transportation, even surpass the car. But it never gained widespread adoption. So it took over 20 years later, in the age of AI, to bring forth new economies and services 
from these in inventions. And they were able to move forward because of the access to new data sets and affordability. So new markets such as scooter ride sharing and personal mobility that can navigate sidewalks, uneven terrain, and stairs. We have more technology right at our fingertips. Is anyone familiar with the latest iPhone release that uses your voice? There's a lot of headlines on this one because of data privacy. But think about it. If you were to lose your voice temporarily, like say dental surgery, or permanently from uh, tracheotomy or a disease such as ALS or Parkinson's, this accessibility feature allows the device to record its user's voice within 15 minutes and it learns your voice using AI and it can respond on your behalf. This provides participation, dignity, and normalcy. Has anyone heard of the AI smart nose? No? Well, yes, there's an AI smart nose. So this can help you if you lose your sense of smell, maybe to COVID or another illness or from birth. I am blown away at the pace of these new devices. I'm especially interested in brain communication to spinal injury patients to allow them to walk and situations to help people hear, see, and translate American Sign Language. Personalization for mental health services and neurodiversity all powered with AI. So if you haven't taken anything away from today, I invite you to understand and appreciate that accessibility is for everyone. So it's for those that have disclosed their disability or if it's hidden. It's for us that are going to be in the workforce and 80% of us will acquire a disability during our lifetime. We have the opportunity to insist that companies and products make accessibility part of their services from the start and not an afterthought. This is the way we are going to create enduring, genuine change. The CEO of Microsoft says, Accessibility is a human right. I'm encouraged because you all here today are digital natives and you are going to be entering the workforce and the generation that comes after you. You will ask the right questions, right? You're not going to take no for an answer. You are going to expect inclusion. You will make this the rule not the exception. So let's think about Bobby again. And the billion children dancing the baby shark. He's two now. What's the workforce going to be like when Bobby enters it? Well, we have the opportunity to create generational change by making accessibility part of the design from the start, not an afterthought. This way, we will have the contributions, perspectives, and experiences of everyone. Together, we will make the workplace as accessible as it can possibly be for Bobby and beyond. Thank you.